In this lesson, I'm going to walk you through a whole bunch of Adobe After Effects compositions, or comps as they're called. If you want to follow along, feel free. If you've already figured out how to open up projects from the Working Files folder that we include with the course, then go ahead and do that. If you haven't figured that out yet, I'm going to explain how to do that in the next lesson. Nevertheless, this is how we can open it up from here. We go to the Working Files folder, open up the After Effects Projects folder, and then double click on 0102 Overview. Now this is a rather involved After Effects project. It has a lot of compositions inside it, but I've created this so I can show you most of the things I'm going to cover in this course, and I'm going to show you them in order here as we go through this. What we have here is a bunch of compositions in the project panel. You can tell they're compositions because of this icon here. That's the composition icon. And those compositions show up down here in the timeline panel as tabs. If I scroll through here, you can see how many we have. I also have a few extra compositions that are sort of composition inside compositions. They're called nested comps, and I've got them tucked away here, but you'll discover them later as I go through these compositions. And then I've got some assets here as well, some video files, Photoshop files, Illustrator files, things like that. So let's take a look at the first comp here. I call it Fish and Bubbles, and this came from an Adobe Illustrator file. I'll show you that file here. Scrolling down a bit, there's the Fish and Bubbles layers. And then the various layers here, the fish, the seaweed, the water, and a bunch of little bubbles. They're all part of an Illustrator file that I imported as a composition. So it came into After Effects with all these layers. And then I duplicated a few layers. I added a few more layers of the algae and stretched them out a little bit and moved them back and forth in this apparent 3D space, but it's really not 3D space. I just changed the layer order here so that I can have some things in the back and some things in the front. And then I animated things. I animated the seaweed, then I brought the fish in, then I animated some bubbles. Let's just kind of drag through here and you'll see what I'm talking about. Here comes the fish in front of the algae in the back and behind the algae in front like that. And then out pop some bubbles and they'll float up to the surface and then the fish swims off. Notice how the scale changes and the motion through the scene changes. These are all very simple things to make inside After Effects and I'll explain all this stuff pretty early on in the course. Let's move on here to text animation. One of the great strengths of After Effects is that you can animate text on a per character or a per word basis. So here are a few examples. Just animate this word, bring this word in like this. And as you see these, you're probably going to go, ah, I've seen this stuff on TV and advertisements, and they were probably made in After Effects. Here you go. Notice how we can change not only the animation, but we can change the text. Different color text, different borders around here that are called strokes, like that. Different fonts, like so. Animate that off. You can also animate in what's called per character 3D space. I've got four sets of per character 3D down here. I've added a light here and a background so you can get a better look at the 3D look. We bring these guys in, you can see they're throwing a shadow on the background there. There's some per character 3D animation there. Here's some more like that. Like so. Notice how it's coming on like that. Now we'll make this one dissolve off there or fall off basically. There we go. That's animation by character. I saved the per character 3D animation for later in the course when I cover 3D, so I'm showing you this one a little bit out of order. Move on to shapes. You can create all kinds of shapes. This is a little star that I twisted a bit, but then you can animate these things over time, like so. You can add extra copies of it, spin them around, change the color, change the stroke color, like that. And then what you can do is you can take something like this and then ask After Effects to brainstorm it. Look at the keyframes, look at the properties, and come up with some instances and then pick one that you like. So this is Brainstorm's version of that same thing you just saw moments ago. Pretty wild. Going down a little bit farther here. You can also try some other things, various other ways to deal with shapes, like so, or like this. Turn these three guys on here. Have some transparency, have these guys contort around a bit like that, or like this with a gradient that comes on. All very nice. You can work with shapes in many different ways. You can also paint, just like this. I can animate just a script like this and change the colors, change the characteristics of the paint as it comes on, something like that. Or we can paint on objects. Painting on these bowls, for example, I just do some quick lines here. Notice how the colors blend with the bowls. That's because they're using what's called a blending mode. Open this up, you see there are three different blending modes here for each brush, three different brushes. If I turn off the blending mode, you'll see how it would look if it was just normal. It's just kind of this flat color paint. But if I go back to the previous thing, you can see how it sort of blends in with the background there on top of this object. Go to what's called a roto brush. It's this great tool inside After Effects that allows you to select objects even if they're moving inside a video. 
So here we've got the changing of the guard here. Let's quickly cut into it a little bit so you can see how that works. There's the changing of the guard. And I thought, you know, these two policemen with their light green or fluorescent green outfits kind of stand out just a bit more than I'd like. So I want to change the color of their outfits. So I use the roto brush to identify them. I'll show you how that looks. I'll just uh, switch off that and turn on one of these tracks and it picks out the object. You can actually select the object and as you go through it, it'll select it and then keep it selected as you move through the clip. In this case, I applied an effect to it to change its color, but before I applied the effect to it, it looked like that, that yellow thing. So once it's selected as a separate layer, then you can put the original layer underneath it. There he is. And then you can apply an effect to it to, let's say, tone it down a bit. So let's get rid of that green outfit and make it blue instead. This one's the same, making him blue as well. And so now they don't stand out so much, even though someone may say, whoa, what happened to the police? Aren't they supposed to be green? But nevertheless, I just want to show you how that works using the rotor brush tool. Clone stamp is similar. You get to clone one area to another. If you've used clone stamp inside Photoshop, you know you can take one part of a picture and put it someplace else, but that's a static image. Here you can clone something out to another part of the scene and have it follow that motion. So for example, I've got these black chips here and I figure that this guy might lose this hand because he's got a hard 17 versus the dealer's probable 19. Oh gosh, so I'm not sure if black is the inexpensive chip or if red's the inexpensive chip, but we're gonna change the value of his chips here using what's called a clone stamp. So what I did was I cloned these red chips here and placed them there instead, and then have them follow that motion. So let me turn on the clone stamp for you. There it is. Now I've got red chips there instead, and notice how they stick there. They follow the action, also change size as the camera pulls back. And notice that this person's hands covers up these red chips, but this red chip still shows up here because I cloned a single image of that and put it over here. So you can do clone stamps that actually follow action here inside After Effects. Masks are also useful for uh, covering up parts of an area or highlighting parts of an area. Here you've got this lovely video of this girl blowing bubbles. Here you go, this video provided by Digital Juice, as was that gambling video in the previous one. Thanks to those folks for providing these clips for us. What I want to do is I want to put a little vignette there, like this. Just a little vignette just to kind of focus your attention at the center of the screen. Well, I did that using what's called a mask. If I click on this, there's the mask that I created there. I created this using a shape tool, the ellipse tool. And then I just kind of darkened the area a little bit. I'll just show you that in isolation. I just darkened this area a little bit to kind of just give it a little bit of a vignette. So I used a mask to create that vignette. I also used a mask down below here with this video clip of this tennis. Let me click away here so you don't see that other one. I wanted to put a couple of images here. So I added these images above there and I put a mask around them. Now, these images actually started their life much larger than that. I'll double click on one of them. That's how it really looks. This is how it looks here inside the composition. That's because I put a mask on it. I could have cropped it, but a mask lets you have rounded corners and things like that, whereas a crop is rectangular. So I use a mask to kind of have a nice rounded corner to these guys and plus added a bevel to it as well. So there are multiple uses for masks and these are just two of many. The puppet tool lets you animate a static object like this. So here this puppet looks like it's articulated, but in fact in this case it's not. It's just one image. There aren't articulated joints here. I do use articulated joints later when I talk about using parenting, but here it's just this little guy all by himself without any articulated joints. And I want to move his legs and his arms. I use the thing called the puppet tool. If I just click on this, I click on the puppet tool up here, you'll see all these little points that I use to animate him. And here's how he looks when you pull him through the animation. Just walking along. And at the knees, things like that, and move his whole body across the scene. You can also apply this kind of animation to objects, not just the things that look like they might be animated, like a puppet character might be animated, but we use the puppet for that example here. After Effects is just chock-a-block with effects. And if I go over here to Effects and Presets and scroll down through them, you'll see all the effect categories. And inside the categories are just tons and tons of effects. If you go over here, Noise and Grain, for example, just be a whole bunch of effects inside that category. So I'm going to devote a fair amount of time to talking about effects.